my big inner voice today because my speaker's broken, so I do apologise. If you can't hear anything that I say, feel free to ask me some questions at the end, okay? Is that all right? Yeah. Fab. Okay, well, welcome along to the Meerkat Talk. My name is Nikki. I am the head keeper here at Tropical Wing Zoo, and this is my lovely mob of 20 meerkats. Now, what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to feed them some of their favourite food. Now, you may have seen that they were pretending like they'd never been fed. This is actually their fifth meal today. <laughs> so before they try and plead poverty, I guarantee you they're well fed. You can probably see that by the shape of them at the moment, Lester. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some meal rooms around the enclosure and they'll get nice and close for you. Now, they're going to look like they're having a massive argument. I promise you they're not. It's just the way that meerkat society works. Whilst they're running around and coming nice and close to you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our guys, OK? Is that all right? Yeah. Good, OK. If I can get them everywhere. So, as I say, we do have 20 uh, meerkats in our mob here. Now, believe it or not, there is a very, very strict order. We have actually got one dominant female called Kalahari. She's the mum to most of the meerkats in here. And then we have one dominant male called Timon. Now, if I see Kalahari, I will try and point her out to you. But as you can probably see, all the meerkats do kind of look very similar. I can just about tell her, her spare. That's her there. The only reason, no, it's not. <laughs> the only way I can tell them apart is she's got a particular marking on her face. Other than that, the rest of them kind of look the same, if I'm completely honest. But, however, the reason why they do look all the same is they have got this lovely, lovely camouflage striping on their backs. Now, believe it or not, these stripes, especially the white bits, are actually like fingerprints. They're actually individual to each meerkat. They can tell each other apart that way. As I said, I can't. They all kind of look like a bit of black and white, uh, brown and white blurry mess, bless them. But out of the wild, they can tell each other apart, and that way they can work out who's who. They also do that via scent. Now, put your hands up here if you would like to have a meerkat as a pet. Who thinks they're cute? <laughs> Cool, that's fine, you can all take one home with you today because I absolutely can't stand them. Believe it or not, I love my meerkats to pieces, I really do, but they are disgusting, okay? They are disgusting, these creatures. First of all, the main reason for this is they do eat an awful lot of different food. One of the things they do like to eat, as you can see, that's Kalahari there, sorry to interrupt. So that is Kalahari there. One of the things they do like to eat is mealworms, so lots of insects, they eat a lot of that. They do also like to eat a lot of dirty things, things like dead animals, rotten eggs, things like that. Obviously what goes in must come out, and they do unfortunately go to the loo an awful lot. The other thing they like to do is scent mark with this poo as well. Now I was very unfortunate one day, I left my fleece up on top of the enclosure there, I carried on sweeping, doing my things, it blew into the enclosure, they claimed it as theirs. Yeah, poo in the pockets, poo, down. no, not, not very nice at all. So yeah, they're much, they do look very cute and very lovely, they're actually quite horrible creatures to keep. The other thing about it, you may notice, they're very, very social animals. So they do have a very strict hierarchy here, but they do also all look after each other. So out in the wild, and even in captivity, they do have something called sentry duty. So what the meerkats will do, you'll often see one sitting up on top of there, and that's a very, very important job. That meerkat has three things to do. Look out for food, look out for predators, and look out for any rival meerkat mobs, okay? That's very, very important. You will notice though, however, when it's nice and warm, they will fall asleep an awful lot. So what they'll do, every hour or so, they'll change over, they'll take it in turns. However, Kalahari never does it, being the dominant female, she's too good for this duty. It tends to be the lower ranking ones that tend to do it. Now obviously, sitting out in the open is quite a dangerous thing to do. It means you're very easy for predators to spot you. So, this camouflage on their back is very, very important. For any aerial predators, it makes it really hard for them to be spotted. Now, the other thing they've got as well is this lovely tunnel system underneath here. It's great. They like to booby trap it for me. I think it's a lovely, solid piece of ground. The bomb, there I go, six feet underground. They do like to do that very often for me. But this tunnel system is really, really important. They use it to hide in. They use it to have their babies in. And they also use it to get away from any predators. But to know there's any predators on the way, this sentry duty must make sure they make a lot of noise to let the rest of the mob know that there's a predator around. But however, they do have different types of predators. So don't forget, you do get your aerial predators, but you also get your snakes as well. And they like to go in the burrows of the meerkats. So obviously if you send your whole family down to this snake, it can cause quite a bit of a problem. So they have got up to 30 different barks and chirks to alert the mob to 30 different types of sort of predators. So aerial predators, anything that might be coming in, and they always know exactly what to listen for. Now these guys here are very lucky, they don't have any aerial predators to worry about. However, apparently planes and low-flying helicopters are quite scary. So if ever you see any of them going over, all our meerkat mob will disappear into it. Now we also are very lucky, we've got some wild ravens that do actually come and visit our ravens in the park. And that will send them underground, but other than that, most of the time, if I'm honest, they don't tend to spot them. Um, I've been sitting in here doing some work and there's been a, a sparrow hawk sitting in this tree there. The meerkat's been looking that way and hasn't been none wiser. So sometimes the system does tend to fail. Bless them. Now for building these tunnels, it's a very, very important family role and they all take part in it. And to be able to dig, they've got some very, very special adaptations. So first of all, their eyes. So they have actually got a very special eyelid that comes across when they're underground, which means they don't get sand in their eyes. They also have very special ears. They have a valve or a kind of, a, basically like a flap of skin inside their ear that they can shut off to stop sand going down inside their ears. And they also have these very, very long claws as well. That enables them to dig really well. And there's some really, really strong back legs, which enables them to move the sand about. 
Now, funnily enough, our meerkats actually have access to this enclosure 24 seven, but every night they do sleep inside. The reason for that, it heats 25 degrees. I don't blame them. It gets to about 17 degrees underground, and in the winter it gets a bit colder, uh, but most nights they do sleep inside. They're a nice snug box with a lovely heated bedroom, so I can't blame them. Are you gonna finish these off? Yeah. There's always one that stands there. He's worked out that if he picks up the dregs of the floor, he doesn't have to run around for it, and that way he can stay nice and fat, bless him. Now, our guys do actually get quite a very specialised diet, so if you was thinking about getting a meerkat, there's a few things that will put you off. One, the smell. Two, they're very social. But also, as I said, they do eat lots of different things. These guys actually get fed six times a day. They're very, very demanding about that as well. If you miss a meal by 10 minutes, they'll come out and let you know. Uh, but they also get things like beef, they get chicken, they get chicks, they get rabbit, they get lots of different things. And one of their favourite things to do is if we give them lots of food, we have to make sure we collapse these tunnels first, because what they do is they will go down there and stash it, which is lovely during the winter. During the summer, it's quite bad, because what they will do is they'll stash it, they don't eat it straight away and then you end up with quite a smelly enclosure bless them however i do love my meerkats they are lovely um, unfortunately there was a bit of a problem when the uh, <laughs> compared the market meerkat the meerkats were on tv lots of people decided to get them as a pet so unfortunately in the pet trade they have increased and what you tend to find is they tend to be a lot in rescue areas and this is very unfortunate for them because they are very social so i advise that if you want to go meet a meerkat mob please make sure you guess my finger please make sure that you do it in a zoo okay so I think I've finished all my meerkat food for today. I just want to say thank you very much for coming along and meeting my meerkat mob today. This is actually the last meerkat talk that we're ever going to have here at Tropical Wing Zoo, so I want to thank you very, very much for coming along. I hope you enjoyed your day. I'll be hovering around if you want to ask me any questions, but otherwise, thank you very much, and hopefully I'll see you around soon. Thank you. Thank you. You made it up then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>